Gay marriage hasn't even been a thing for a decade yet, but it is true that there is a chance that the gays will lose their right to marriage. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. There's a new marriage equality bill that just passed in the House like two days ago, and now it's on its way to the Senate where its fate is a little more unlikely there since the Senate is literally equally split. But it did pass in the House, and what is this bill? You might be wondering, let me tell you. I have the actual, like, <laughs> copy of the act on congress.gov. It's called the Respect for Marriage Act. No person, un it says, no person acting under the color of state law may deny full faith and credit to any public act, record, or judicial proceeding of any other state pertaining to a marriage between two individuals on the basis of sex, race, ethnicity, or national origin of those individuals, or a right to claim arising from such marriage on the basis that such marriage would not be recognized under the law of that state on the basis of the sex, race, ethnicity, or national origin of those individuals. It basically protects marriage for not just gay people, but also it seems in this text on the basis of race. So it basically protects uh, gay people if Obergefell versus Hodges was overturned by the Supreme Court which some people have said is unlikely, but there's still a likelihood of that happening. This law would basically protect the right of gay people getting married in states where they would try to ban it if that landmark case was overturned in the Supreme Court. This bill would codify same-sex marriage, uh, which is similar to Congress's failed attempt to codify Roe v. Wade, which obviously did not happen. <laughs> Uh, this article says, put simply, the RFMA creates a backstop to ensure that every same-sex couple can retain protections after Obergefell's demise if their own state nullifies their marriage, and it does so on strong constitutional grounds that should withstand any legal challenge. This bill would repeal DOMA, which is what I choose to call it, which is a bill from 1996 that Imposed a federal ban on same-sex marriage, denying federal rights and privileges to same-sex couples who are married under state law. Also declared that no state had an obligation to recognize a same-sex marriage licensed by another state. DOMA stands for Defense of Marriage Act. It was intended to define and protect the institution of marriage. It specifically denied access to marriage for same-sex couples, right? And in 2013, the Supreme Court invalidated DOMA, but it remains on the books ready to spring back into effect should the court overturn Windsor. And Windsor basically ruled that DOMA was, an uncon was unconstitutional and that the federal government can't discriminate between lesbian and gay couples for the purpose of determining federal benefits and protections. That's what Windsor was. Similar, very similar to Obergefell, um, which again, if you don't know what Obergefell is, state bans and same-sex marriage and on recognizing same-sex marriage was unconstitutional on the basis of the 14th Amendment, okay? 14th Amendment says that no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without the due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction of the equal protection of the laws, okay? Inclusion, it would repeal DOMA, and it would protect the right to get married if you're a same-sex couple. If o Obergefell, or Windsor was overturned by the Supreme Court. And this article goes into all the, the law speak and why this is like a constitutional law to pass. And of course, something like this, something that would codify gay marriage. Wow, were Republicans upset about it. They are mad. They don't want us to live, man. <laughs> Ted Cruz, he says SCOTUS is clearly wrong to legalize gay marriage, okay. So, Senator Ted Cruz said Saturday that he believes the Supreme Court was clearly wrong when it decided in a historic 2015 ruling that same-sex marriage was legal under the Constitution. In a video uploaded to YouTube from his Verdict Plus podcast, Ted Cruz has a podcast? Cruz discussed what was described as the vulnerability of the Obergefell ruling. He argued that the ruling was not correctly decided, making a similar argument to the Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas in his concurring opinion from the top judicial body formally overturned Roe v. Wade. So he says, Oberg felt like Roe v. Wade ignored two centuries of our nation's history. Marriage was always an issue that was left to the states. We saw states before Obergefell, some states that were moving to allow gay marriage, other states that were moving to allow civil partnerships. 
there were different standards that the states were adopting. Okay. So again, our favorite fucking argument that everything should be left up to the states, apparently. Nothing can be federally protected or f there can't be any federal laws. There are some things that should be federally protected. I've said this before and I'll say it again. The only reason that these people do not like a law that federally protects gay marriage is because they don't want gay marriage to be a thing. These are the same people who said that they don't want, for an example, the people who wanted Roe v. Wade to be overturned. They want a federal law that completely bans all abortions in every single state. They don't care about it being a statewide thing. They don't want states to decide what laws to pass in their own state. What they want is their agenda to be pushed, which is fucking so backwards. I feel like I'm in the Stone Ages, man. Ay, 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 ay. They just don't want gay marriage to be a thing. Respect for Marriage Act does not get passed in Congress and Obergefell gets overturned. Probably half the states would immediately ban same-sex marriage. And they don't want it to be just those states. They, like I said, they want every state to ban same-sex marriage because they hate, they hate gay people. They, they hate queer people. It disgusts them. And like I said, this bill is now gonna go to the Senate where they need to find 10 Republican senators to override a potential filibuster and pass it, which the likelihood of that happening, I'm sorry to be grim, but it's low. Republicans rarely, if ever, vote outside of their party. Matt XIV, uh, he has a Twitter. He's a fellow queer. They post some really great stuff, so you should, you should follow him if you want. So they made a little presentation. It says, let's take a look at how they honor the traditional definition of marriage in their own lives, which again, they call calling this an attack on traditional marriage. Gay people, they are attacking traditional marriage. Ooh. Let's see how they live their traditional marriage lives that they love to preach. Again, all credit to, to Matt. Lauren Bober voted against it yesterday. She's been outspoken about how LGBTQ people are grooming kids. Of course, our favorite argument, just throwing around the word groomer, even though, yeah, and causing it to lose all meaning. <laughs> but has been relatively quiet about how her husband was arrested in 2004 for exposing his genitals to a group of teenage girls in a bowling alley. Lauren was there and the two married three years later and there is a picture of the charge against him for indecent exposure. Real, real great marriage you got going there. Who's the groomer? Uh, allegedly, who was the groomer? Clay Higgins voted against marriage equality yesterday. He defines marriage Biblically, as wom as between one man and one woman. He believes this so much that he's done it four times. <laughs> Married in 1983 and divorced in 1991. Remarried the same year and divorced in 99. Remarried in 03, divorced in 07, and remarried in 09. A, <laughs> a king of tradition. That is so funny. Divorce is considered heinous. It, it, for, speaking Catholicly, Catholicly, I don't even know if that's a word. It's considered heinous. That's why that one guy, what Louis the Seventh, made the Church of England is because he wanted to divorce his wife, but the Catholic Church said no. It is considered a sin under Catholicism. It might be under other uh, forms of Christianity. I'm not sure, but I know it's considered a sin other under Catholicism to divorce you, the person you're married to. So, while he may believe that a woman, uh, a woman. <laughs> While he may believe that marriage is between a man and a woman, he hasn't specified what age those people must be. Matt has been under investigation since 2020 for an alleged sexual relationship he's had with a 17-year-old girl who he reportedly paid to travel with him, violating child sex trafficking laws. All alleged, Matt, Mr. Gates, all alleged, but again, I ask the burning question, who is the real groomer? Allegedly. Majorie Taylor Green. she spent much of her career preaching Christianity and recently claimed that straight people will soon be extinct. She also spends a lot of time in the gym where she's reportedly had extramarital affairs with two men. So cheating is okay, allegedly. Cheating is okay, but gay marriage is wrong. Uh, recently stated he, the left wants to destroy the nuclear family in America. That's what he probably sounds like, right? Perhaps he should focus on his own nuclear family, which lasted less than a year and ended in divorce in late 2021. He has also been accused of sexual misconduct and assault by four women he went to college with. Wow. Then there's this whole list of other politicians who voted against it and have been divorced and or married multiple times. And I don't even know how many is here. It looks about to be 20. 
almost seems like someone's picking and choosing what they want marriage to be about. And it's almost like they don't care about marriage being this sacred union and marriage uh, following the Christian laws of marriage. It's almost like they just hate gay people. We have a video that we are going to react to from Matt Walsh. So um, this is part of his podcast, I believe. The Democrats vote to redefine marriage. Republicans obediently agree. Uh, lawmakers passed the Respect for Marriage Act. That's, the, that's what they're calling it. We're going to respect marriage by destroying it. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Now, on this interracial marriage bit, because, well, what does that have to do with so-called gay marriage? So-called gay marriage. What the fuck does that even mean? What does that mean, dude? So-called gay marriage? What else is it called? Please, tell me, what the fuck else is it called? Before he gives his take on that clip, I'm going to say what I'm going to say, right? Matt Walsh put in a C-SPAN clip of some Democratic representative speaking about how he thinks that this bill should get passed, the um, Respect for Marriage Act, that is, in, ca in the case that Obergefell, the Supreme Court case, gets overturned by the court, and he says that Justice Clarence Thomas included in his opinion when it, uh, they overturned Roe v. Wade that he was looking to overturn Obergefell next and use sort of the same argument that they used for Wade. That's basically what he said in the clip. Those cases are under the, you know, unenumerated rights category of the Constitution, so they are not actually in the Constitution. So the Supreme Court could use the same argument that they use for their overturning of Roe v. Wade to overturn Obergefell and all of those cases that he just listed, including the interracial marriage case. Clarence Thomas, his, his, uh, his statements are being used as the basis for this law that they're trying to pass. But he even says that Clarence Thomas never mentioned anything about interracial marriage. Of course he didn't. So no one is talking about interracial marriage. Why are you so pressed that it is included in the bill? What harm does it do that it is included in the bill? I think it is something that should be protected because God only knows what will happen, okay? He wouldn't understand because there's literally nothing about him that makes him in any way, shape, or form underprivileged. He has money. He's white. He's cis. He's straight. He's a guy. How would he even be able to grasp the concept of not being privileged? Of course, many people on the right, as we just discussed, have just thrown their hands up on the marriage thing altogether. That's why 47 Republicans are now on board. And what they're on board with, okay, let's be clear about what they're on board with here. This is why Republicans don't vote out of their party. <laughs> because if they do, wow, they will be literally blackballed from the fucking GOP. Fucking Mitt Romney, who voted with the impeachment of Donald Trump, they fucking hate him. They hate Mitt Romney now because he made one decision that they did not, the fucking far-right Republicans do not agree with. Have you guys ever heard of a liberal Republican? Do you know that being liberal and conservative, two separate things, Democrat and Republican are two separate things. Sometimes liberal and Democrat, they are the same thing. Sometimes conservative and Republican are the same thing, but there are conservative Democrats and there are liberal Republicans who vote liberally sometimes. How is this so hard to understand? One of those Republicans is Representative Nancy Mace. She says, uh, this is what passes for conservatism in 2022, okay? This, is, this, is, this was her tweet. If gay couples want to be as happily or miserably married as straight couples, more power to them. Trust me, I've tried it more than once. So making a joke about her multiple divorces and then say, yeah, yeah. But let's get on board with this radical far left legislation. It's. It's radical to say that two people of the same sex should be able to get married legally. That affects, yeah, you know, one of the fundamental building blocks of human civilization. Your fundamentals are based on religion and a hatred for gay people that has lasted for centuries. Those are your fundamentals. It's pretty pathetically weak of an argument 
to say that Republicans have so many just weak arguments uh, for why they don't support certain uh, equalities. It's all based on this fucking weird philosophical ideas and just beliefs instead of facts. If two things are equal, they are the same. We heard about the, demo, you know, we just heard that marriage is, is, is equal, that marriage equality. Are same-sex unions the same as equal to heterosexual unions? Um, yes. I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say <laughs> yes. Here's my argument for you, Matt Walsh. Your biblical beliefs should not coincide with government. Separation of church and state was something that the founders believed in. That's my argument. The people who made this country, who wrote your precious constitution, believed in a separation of church and state. Let's keep in mind, n not everyone is Christian. People of all different religions or non-religions who live in the U.S. and the laws that they have to follow should not be based off of a book that you personally believe in. Is this clear enough for you, dude? The reason why I'm bringing up the religion thing is because the biggest preachers of same-sex marriage being wrong are ca Catholics, certain Christianity. Um, yes, there are people who believe in Islam who don't support same-sex marriage. And people who believe in Buddhism and all these different religions who don't believe in same-sex marriage, but largely it is Christians who really, really push this belief on people that same-sex marriage is wrong based on what God said and being able to procreate and whatever the fuck. And it's just wrong, not just because it's homophobic, but also there are people who are in those religions or people who don't believe in those religions who believe that same-sex marriage is okay. And you can't just push a belief on somebody uh, federally, legally, just because you believe in that one thing and that's like your philosophical belief is that your god thinks that that's good it's just not it's not okay and there should be a separation between church and state are these two whatever labels you put on them are these two categories the same clearly not why aren't they the same well because the union of a man and a woman has in principle the potential to create of itself a whole new life the union of two people of the same gender does not have that potential, period. Isn't that sort of messed up to just strip marriage down? You know, it's a union between two people who love each other, people who want that to be legally recognized. You're just stripping it down to being able to make babies. So that's all marriage is to you. Why are you stripping it down to be so barbaric and now marriage is solely defined on two people, a man, and a cis man and a cis woman who can get married and make a child. What about people who are married and who are heterosexual who can't make a child for whatever reason? Maybe they're infertile or something else is the reason or they want to adopt. Is their marriage not seen as equal now because they cannot make a child? But we don't reduce it down to baby making if the one of them is un infertile, right? Because they're a heterosexual couple. So he explicitly says the potential to create life. And then he goes on to say that um, non-normal families ruin society and whatever else. Um, and I just, like, why is he not attacking straight couples who get divorces, who have uh, extramarital affairs, who um, don't have children, who can't have children and have to do, use a surrogate or a sperm donor or something else? Like, how come those people aren't under extreme attack by Matt Walsh, but... The gay people who have probably healthier relationships are. Make it make sense. And, and, and you'll notice that the people who tore down so-called traditional marriage, they never, they never did offer a new definition of marriage. Or, or, and, they, and, then, and they never explained what marriage's new purpose is. Marriage is a union between two people who love each other and want to be legally, they want that love to be legally represented. There's my definition. It's pretty easy, actually. It's easy to understand what I'm saying. Again, even if you don't agree with it, you can still understand what I'm trying to say, because it's very clear. 
union between a man and woman has in principle the potential to create human life. I do understand what you're trying to say and I, I disagree and I think you are wrong and I just listed why I think you're wrong, so. He goes on to say that my argument of marriage being between two people who love each other is wrong because why do you need to get married to love each other? Um, which is just so stupid, such a stupid thing to say. Like I said, marriage isn't just being able to produce a child, it's not. Marriage is about love and trusting someone enough and the legal benefits that come with being married to someone who you trust with your life um like it's so much deeper than having a child and like he knows this he's very aware he's just using this really poor argument like i said this weird uh philosophical arbitrary argument about why gay people shouldn't be able to get married because he simply just does not like gay people and he doesn't want them to have basic rights that's where i'm going to end it so We'll see where this goes with the Senate. Probably nowhere, uh, if I'm being fucking honest with you. And if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down anything that, comment anything down below that you want to comment down below. Uh, as long as you are not clinically insane, then don't comment anything, please, for the love of God. Subscribe if you like me, because I make videos. And, uh, you know, marriage, gay marriage. What is it? Supposed gay marriage. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one, alright? Bye.